Nemo. Hey, Noir. What's up? Okay. What's up? Three, two, one. Hello, 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 my neurodiverse home dogs. Today we are uh, exploring self care and self discipline. So, who are we if you don't know us? We are the ADHD explorers. We are part of the family of ADHD doers. We've been part of the community for like freaking forever now. And we are a bunch of ADHDers that just want the best for other ADHDers. And we make uh, resources and everything that we've ever learnt, all the science, all the crowd. Uh, all the group of everyone together, all the suggestions of what has worked for them. We all pull it together and we make these podcasts to make the ultimate practical advice for how to live life and kick ass while also having ADHD, like how to make the most of everything. So today, self-care versus self-discipline. Because I wanted to do an episode on this because I've had a big transformation in my, my life over the past two years. I've gone from beating myself up for everything, feeling guilt and shame about everything, about having ADHD, you know, and I think that when we are in it, the, there's like two modes, as I see it, of managing your ADHD. You have, mm -hmm. you have like the guilt and shame spiral, which I think a lot of us find ourselves in often, and I still do find myself in, um, and, you know, you're, you're kind of beating yourself up for a lot. And that's a big burden to bear. You know, it's like you're trying to do something, but if you're beating yourself up at the same time, it's like extra hard. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to introduce this episode by introducing two concepts. Like there's the guilt and shame spiral, which is like mode one, you could say. And then there's this mm -hmm. other mode of managing ADHD, which is like a self-care upward spiral. Which to me is like, you know, it's encouraging. You're, you're in a monologue, like even when it says, oh, you're a bit rubbish at this. It says, okay, I see my brain is saying that. I see that's the inner critic. Maybe I'm going to remember what my emotional motivation is for this task. Be practical. Support myself with every little win I do. Accept mm. where I am. And I think that that's the two modes I want to introduce. What do you think of that, Addy? Does that make sense? Yeah, so I feel like we go through stages of either like, yeah, like that self-flagellation where you're like whipping yourself to try and get yourself to do things. And a lot of that comes from like this idea of, yeah, like willpower or discipline or yeah. you just need to try harder, yeah. right? And that is not helpful a lot of the time because then we just we we, re, we are trying so hard all the time you know like it's everything is a lot of effort for us and so then when things aren't going as well we're just like oh, i just gotta try harder try harder try harder and then you just yeah. burn out right um yeah so it's not really helpful and then that yeah the flip side of that is doing it uh, as a gift to yourself um, and taking care of your future self essentially by doing these like little things that help you out and that really is just like the essence of self-love, you know? And, yeah. and it just feels a lot better in the end to do it that way. Like I love how this could be like if we're with the ADHD explorers like, and people talk about self-love, right? I think we could do it like, yeah, okay, self-love. But what is that practically? What is that as in like a day in the life? You know, what does that look yourself, like? Actually, because it seems like such an ethereal thing. Like, oh, self-love helps everything happen. And frick yeah. me, if someone said that, I would have punched <laughs> them. I would have punched them in the face. Um, <laughs> no, but really, you mentioned discipline, right? And I think that when I, before yeah. I knew I had ADHD, like I learned I had ADHD at the age of like 28, right? Like you, late diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, and I, all, all my life, there were all these videos and all these things that were like, all you need is discipline. All you need is discipline. All you need is discipline. And I was like, okay, like, what? Like, it's like when someone <laughs> says, or oh, just that? focus. And then I stumbled years, years later across uh, a post by Mark Manson, who wrote that book uh, about not giving a fuck, how to not give a fuck or whatever. I've forgotten the name, sorry. But he wrote, he wrote this and he wrote that, 
forget self-discipline is what he said. And if it works for you, great. But this was his concept. He said, forget self-discipline. When you start to care for your own needs, especially your basic needs, Mm -hmm. you start to actually, you don't need the discipline because you genuinely want to do what is right for you. Like you don't need to like fight. I feel like with discipline, sometimes there's a part of us that is fighting back and there's a part that wants to do it. And that is like, Mm. you know, it doesn't line up in your brain. It's like two having mm-hmm. two brains at once you really want to do it and that's why it's like don't feels do it. like more effort right yeah you're fighting it's like dragging a boulder yeah yeah right going the other way um, <laughs> and so like this um like let's let's talk about the guilt spiral and and shame spiral because i think that when you have adhd we're always comparing ourselves comparing ourselves to neurotypicals we see people have mm-hmm. effortless executive function and and i'm always looking at people who are organized and thinking oh why can't i be like them bang shame shame and then mm-hmm. shame is like influencing me for like however long it lasts you know um there's like self-hate it's disempowering less less power less agency i feel you know, I feel like I'm mm. almost less in control of my body. I just want to like lie down and I just want to feel sad. And mm-hmm. so I've been planting these little seeds of giving gifts to my future self. And I, and like noticing, I feel like here's, here's how, what I have learned to do is every time I see myself beating myself up, like an inner critic is having a rage storm and like blabbing. Mm. <laughs> I say, I say, hey, I see you inner critic. Shut the fuck up. You're, you're being a bit <laughs> cheeky today. Yeah, shut the fuck up. You're being way too cheeky, <laughs> mate. Um, calm down. Give me a break. And what we're gonna do is celebrate what I have done today. And I'm and and so I I take that point right there to write a new neural network in my brain. Like I see the pattern. Mm. Normally I'm like criticized and then I go straight to shame. Okay, I see the criticism now in my brain. I'm going to celebrate that because I have an awareness of what I'm thinking and that grows your mindfulness. And to celebrate Mm. that shows your neurons, it stimulates your neurons and your neurons are like, oh yeah, thank you, I'll do that again. And from there you can write in a new pattern. And so you can take those moments to, you know, put your focus in your body or focus like on something physical you can do that, mm-hmm. or you can focus on maybe a positive res- uh, sentiment or something you, mm-hmm. that you have done today that's great. Because I'm sure you know, Addy, like what it's like when, when I was in the depths of depression with ADHD, you don't feel, you don't feel like you have power to do anything. You don't mm-hmm. feel like mm-hmm. you can even take a shower. And so they say, do what you can with what you have. I love that saying. And, I, mm-hmm. and I, that really dragged me through that period. Do what you can with what you have. So I would freaking drag myself to the shower. And if I had a shower, I'd be like, I did it. And I love what Brooke was saying the other day about celebrating small wins. And I think that really yeah. does set the foundation for that upward self-care spiral. And it, and it mm-hmm. trains mm-hmm. you the opposite. We are looking out for our future self. We are celebrating every single win we do, whatever it is, however small. If you put your pens in a place where you can use them, if you you can put your, I don't know, if you can make your bed in the morning, it sets the tone. Today is a self-care day. If you don't know how to self-care mm-hmm. for yourself, if you never got taught, maybe you never had a good influence of how to care for yourself, um, then you can ask yourself, what would someone who loves himself do? Yeah. And when I was reading all these books about self-care, self-love, self-nourishment, that's what it said. That was the basic maxim or uh, reflection point to do. You can ask what? yourself, yeah. what would someone that loves himself a lot do? Of, a lot of like the time when we think about self-care, we think about like, self-indulgence or going into like oh I've got to take a luxurious bath and or like I have to like do all of these like really like you know I'm gonna meditate for like 30 minutes and get in really like nice headspace like sure those things can be self-care but actually strip it right back like what are the basics like if you are taking care of 
a child or a pet or something like that. What do you need to do? You need to feed them. You need to give them water. You need to make sure that they are getting good sleep and you like have shelter essentially like his really base needs. And, and oftentimes we are ignoring those. Like, do you have a glass of water right now, listener? Go get a glass <laughs> of water. Like, like these are self care, right? And, and we forget. <laughs> and it's oh like my gosh. when you when you're really you know dysregulated and and again Brooke talked about it in the episode we did with her about how when you start getting dysregulated and um heading into burnout and overwhelm it's like taking a step back looking at like the fundamentals and being like okay what am i not addressing what base needs need attention now like did i eat enough today probably not like go make yourself a sandwich <laughs> do you ever have this thing where you're doing a task, let's say, or even when, when you're with a friend and you get randomly annoyed for no reason and then you realise you just needed a, a pee. You haven't eaten. Like, yeah, or you haven't eaten. What? I feel like it's like, what is going on there? Do we have just such a telescopic focus that we ignore? <laughs> like, I know that like a lot of uh, ADHDers and uh, autistic spectrum people have uh, what they call alexithemia which is like a lack of yeah. awareness of sensations in the body. And I think that's a really cool topic mm -hmm. to just to bring about. Talk yeah, about. no interoception. Because I feel like a lot of the time my focus is completely externalized and I'm not paying any attention to those sensations that are like, you need to pee, you need to pee, <laughs> please pee. Or I get, I get, really, actually today I was moving a sofa. I was taking apart my sofa and like taking it all apart. And I said to my partner, I was like, mm -hmm. babe, um, I just feel really dead. I'm like, I'm like 20% battery right now. Um, I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. And she's like, have you eaten? And I was like, no, I've not eaten. Like it helped to have that kind of like <laughs> conversation on, let's scroll through the basic needs. Has he showered? Has he hydrated himself? Has he fed himself? And actually this is funny too. Um, yeah. When I did the ADHD music production course with Seb, uh, our whole first day mm. on the ADHD friendly uh, music production course was all about caring for your basic needs. On a break, rest your brain. It was Literally like, on a break, yeah, keep your blood sugar good. Uh, it, there was a whole, there was a little section of like 20 minutes on just keep yourself hydrated. And, it, and you know what? I think that was really, really important. And I think I forget it all the time. Like, I don't know what the secret is, but mm -hmm. I think it. this is a pattern, you know? I feel like it's a pattern that when we start to feel emotional, we can be like, oh, yeah, am I just like needing to cover some basic need right now? Oh, I didn't do my morning routine and I'm really stinky and I feel yeah. weird about that. Maybe that's why I'm so pissed right now, <laughs> which has definitely happened to me like a few times. Do you ever forget to shower? Yeah. Like yeah. what? Like... Yeah, I, don't know I mean, why. An, I'm an evening showerer. Showerer? Yar. Showerer? Yar? 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 Is that word? Showerer. 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 Shower shower <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you shower in the evening. Five minutes whilst figuring out how to someone who showers. Yeah, I uh, shower in the evening just because I often uh, do sports in the evening. I like to go to bed clean. Um, then I know that my bed sheets are clean along. I don't know. It's just like a, a nice way to calm down in the evening as well for me it's like a hot shower um helps to tell your body it's time to go to sleep um but i do sometimes still i didn't shower uh on wednesday but like i also didn't feel bad about it I was like, i'm sitting around at home all day not doing anything like it wasn't yeah. an active day for me so i was like i didn't get sweaty i don't need to shower but my morning thing is maybe i'm not showering but i wash my face uh, oh, nice. in the morning every day and mm. kiss my clean my skin's so clean because you can tell i don't have any spots right now if you look at me like this um yeah it's interesting like i, I it's such a physiological reaction when you put uh, water on your face and i learned when i did a, my free diving course that there are actually like sensors specially for the face like under the eyes or something and that when you go into the water it like changes your heart rate he said it slows your heart rate, mm. but I think mine definitely spikes when I jump in the cold shower or something. <laughs> but there's something going on with water on your face that is, is very connected to the body and alerting. Yeah. 
So yep. talking about these two modes, we have the guilt spiral and we have the upward care, self-care spiral, right? How do we shift mm -hmm. from hating ourselves to being like, okay, I'm going to give some gifts to my future self. And I feel mm -hmm. like it's like that old beautiful saying about the two wolves, you know, which the one wins? There's a there's an evil <laughs> wolf and there's a good wolf. Which one wins? The one you feed, you know? And I think yeah. um, I heard this. I heard this um, saying once I'm, I met this monk in Thailand and he said, your mind is like an iPhone. There's many notifications. And I loved when he said that because I, I started <laughs> to see everything in terms of I'm just all picturing of these, a like... monk using an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Um, but it really it really like that visual has really helped me because I see that when I feel a guilt or shame spike, I'm, I see it just like an, an, a notification on an iPhone mm. and you can click on it and you can engage with it and be like, oh, that swipe. guilt is real. That's not just the radio of the mind, echoes of the past. That is who I am, you know? Um, and that's where I think it's like when you say it's who you are, then then it's like locked in into your identity and, you, and it stays with you. But if you can see it instead as kind of like, oh, this is a temporary state of mind that maybe I'm not meeting a core need right now. And I love the mm -hmm. idea of just being aware of when you get those notifications and choosing a new positive habit pattern that is in line with self-care rather than self-hate or berating yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that's really cool. Uh, yeah. I think that another I liked, thing... Yeah, go for it. Um, what you were saying before was that you were saying when you're being when you're being self-critical of yourself and when you're trying to change that um, and like trying not to then be self-critical of being self-critical of yourself, if that makes sense. Like, it's cause that deep... can become like a loop <laughs> and instead it's of like written. when you're trying to get out of that mindset, instead of them being like, Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm beating myself up again. And then you're doing it to yourself. What you, what you said of like, you notice that, Oh, I'm being self-critical okay well how do we shift that mindset and like talk to you I'm like oh, okay that's something that's coming up let's try and like shift that and and just be yeah. like kind to yourself even this concept i think what it takes to move from the guilt spiral to the self-care spiral this concept of acceptance like neil harrison was it what was his name mm -hmm. the kick we interviewed that kickboxing champion for for oh, the yeah. podcast and he said, we asked him, like, do you still have, like, bad days where you just, like, hate yourself and you just want to lie in bed? And he's like, yeah, I have those days. I just let those days happen. And then I wake up the next day mm -hmm. and, every, and I uh, attack the day on purpose. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So he, he is kind of just accepting. He's like, okay, this happens. And I think mm. this concept of expanding your ability to accept uncomfortable emotions is part of this shift from guilt and shame spiral to this upward self-care spiral. And I think that's helped me a lot. And I can, I'll demonstrate the point, right? I was at a, uh, a party last night. It was my friend's birthday. What? And I went in and I was feeling a bit like, oh, there's so many new people. And I was feeling all this anxiety. Especially mm -hmm. when you, when a new person comes in, maybe you're talking to people, you know, and a new person comes in, I'm like, oh, uh oh, inside I'm like, oh no, a new person. I have to like switch on and make sure they don't hate me. You know, I have to be a n nice person. All of this, my heart rate goes through the roof. And for, for whatever reason, I approached it as like a challenge. And I was like, right, I'm just gonna see how long this anxiety lasts. Because someone said that it's temp, someone said like that, that social anxiety is temporary. And I was like, okay, mm. well, let's, let's go into this like a challenge. How, let's see how long it lasts. Because I think that it's normal when you meet a new person to feel a bit anxious, but it doesn't mm -hmm. last the whole thing. You get through it together and then it is easy. And that's exactly what happened. I went in, I was feeling anxious. I didn't know how to talk to them. I froze up. I really did freeze up. I didn't know how to say anything. I just went quiet and was like, mm. but then, you know, it just, social interactions just like, I don't know, it breaks at a certain point. 
this like tension and it turned into a really like good conversation i got to meet them and i didn't have any need to and i think that just seeing that anxiety mm. is temporary and 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 choosing to approach it as i am purposefully intentionally trying to expand my capacity to feel rather than mm-hmm. just being like oh no fuck i'm feeling anxiety let's make this three times worse you know and sometimes like i think it's <laughs> fine if you want to take yourself out of the situation we all have different capacities to feel and and i know it's like that's something that we really we experience things really intensely and and i think that mm. growing our capacity to feel is part of this because i think that you know it's like those fleas in the jar are you familiar with that no i don't think so <laughs> they did this experiment where they had loads of fleas in a jar and mm-hmm. they can jump really high, right? They can jump higher than this jar yeah. was. And they put a lid on a jar and they let them stay in there for like a while. And then they open the lid again and none of them jumped that high again. They didn't jump out. And I think because that sometimes... They, there was a limit and they had learned that that was the limit. They learned that that was the limit. And I think that sometimes... There are times when we have low capacity, we try and expose ourselves to uncomfortable emotions and it's too much because we don't have the capacity. But there, are, mm. I think we, we set the bar there and I know that I have done that too. So we're, we're all in the same. So we're putting here. a lid on our own jar a lot of the That's time what is I'm what you're thinking. saying. I'm thinking like, let's explore the capacity to f- feel feel things. And it's not it's not like... I'm not saying to like shove down or ignore your emotions. I'm just saying that we can expand our capacity to remain calm when they come and mm. to let them come and go and expand our ability to let them dance their dance without being like, oh, this is how I'm feeling, making a story about how we're feeling and uh, and writing that in like it's part of us rather than like an like an echo from the past or just something phys- physiological, like you need some water, you know, or something so, natural. Yeah. If w- what you're saying then with regards to self care is that like, if you're having those times where you're struggling and instead of being like, Oh, I'm a piece of shit and I can't take care of myself. Just like understanding that it's temporary and giving yourself grace and being like, Oh, I'm having a potato day today and I can't get out yeah. of bed and I have not showered or brushed my teeth. Um, and then, yeah, just being like, and that's okay. Like it's okay that that happens sometimes. Um, as opposed to like, yeah, feeling guilty about it because then the, the guilt feeds itself. <laughs> the guilt is a horrible emotion to feel. And, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's one of the worst, and I think it's a lot. It's one that a lot of ADHDers and anyone that feels like they're not like so mainstream can feel shame, mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's one that like triggers us into freeze and and uh, fight and flight. And I think that uh, as we expand our ability to like grow our vagal tone, and uh, you know. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to put into words, but I think that it's possible to grow it through things like um, just having an intention to see if you can, you know. And I, I just wanted to share that because it's been a, it's been a big thing for me, like learning to feel more in a good way rather than like mm. be like, oh no, everything's everything's crazy all the time. Like we we um, <laughs> it's like preventing yourself from multiplying the pain. And so, yeah, at the party, I saw it came and it went and it was good. And I, and I, I think that's freaking awesome. You like, mm. I think that part of that self care upward spiral is kind of like, uh, doing things that are ADHD friendly too. Like, for example, I've been thinking a lot about this concept of, do you ever like have a task and you don't really want to do it? And you're like, oh, do I have I to do this? <laughs> Do you ever like, I don't know how, how well known this is in the ADHD community, but uh, I've started to reflect on this, where you frame it in, like from your, in, like what you get out of it, like what it, why you're excited about it, like why yeah. it's a good thing for you. Emotional framing, you could call it. 
like emotional mm-hmm. reward framing or something. I think that like that's been a real good boost into that upward spiral, you know, because I think that we learn all these tips from like the neurotypical world and the neurotypical like self-help world that are always like, oh, you know, just force yourself to do it. And, uh, you know, just use your willpower instead of being like, oh, why don't you frame it with what you're excited about about it? Like today I was I was doing undoing my bed, changing a, a bed over to just a mattress on the floor because I want to roll around on, like that. Um, yeah. And I was undoing my bed and I was like, geez, I'm so tired. And I'm so annoyed. And then and then I was like, oh, I can frame this into, oh, I get to make like. I love making palettes, you know, like I get to frame it into something that's like genuinely more interesting and something that I'm excited about more than just like, oh, I have a freaking a million bolts to undo here. And then then I didn't have any problem with the motivation. So uh, that's just been game changing. I've been doing that. that? Yeah, like especially right now, like going to the gym because it's it's winter now it's fucking rain remember in vancouver and i hate it like it's dark and cold and i don't want to go outside and so like getting to the gym is a lot of work i have to like put on all my rain gear and cycle there and it's just like uh um but i know how good i feel after i've worked out and like how much I, i i started boxing again and there's some heavy bags at my gym so i just go there and i like punch the shit out of them and like there's a guy there who holds some bags for me and lets me kick him. It's great. Um, and I feel so calm afterwards. Like I come home oh, and I'm, I'm, my mind is clear. I feel so calm. And so I have to like remind myself like, oh, it's going to be work to get there. I'm going to be cold, but like, I'm going to feel good afterwards. I'm going to feel nice and calm afterwards. Wow. <laughs> nice. And I feel like it's hardest at the beginning. Like it's obvious that you have built that reward into your into your mind to have that habit like you're so familiar with the goodness you're going to get out of it that it's like yeah you know that that's waiting for you at the end and that, i feel like that makes it such a sustainable habit you've bathed in that goodness afterwards <laughs> yeah that's freaking awesome well is there anything else you wanted to share about self-care versus self-discipline i think part of self-care as well is taking time to do things you enjoy uh because i think we so often neglect that in uh respect of just doing basic stupid life shit like like yes. living as an adult because because we have to right and um it was something my therapist actually she was like i want you before our next session she's like i want you to start drawing or painting again She's like, because it brings you a lot of joy and I know that it's like good for you mentally. And so I started again this week, I started doing, there's a thing called Inktober, but obviously I missed that because it's November now. So I looked up Inkvember and just to see (laughs) if there were any prompts. And so I started doing that and I've been drawing every day for the last like three, four days. Wow. Mm. I like so good. It's so good to get back into like doing something just for the sake of it like the creative side something that i just enjoy that i can absorb myself in whatever that thing is for you that counts as self-care like if that's knitting or like for you Mm. ben like playing music just like messing around on your guitar your minecraft even like those are (laughs) self-care as well i love that you know it's almost like self-care should be expanded and rebranded as self-nourishment and it's well, like such really. a good thing. It... Self care sounds like a lot of effort to me. Like, I don't yeah, want to freaking it's like, like caretaker. Like I have, I'm child. Don't yeah, take care of myself. It's like homework energy. I don't yeah. want to do that. I'm an adult. Homework energy. I'm an adult. Oh, I want self nourishment. That was another thing. That was a distinguishment. I mean, I don't know if it's completely related, but like my with, with in therapy the other day, I had a realization of the difference between work and effort because I I mentioned. Uh, a potential spoiler that my relationship right now feels like a lot of work and she was like oh that sounds like ugh, work i have to go to work like homework she's like because relationships are effort and but if it's worth the reward that effort is worth it right like when you're creating something when you're making a cake and you know you're going to get cake at the end it's worth the effort right it's um and so 
yeah, like self care or nourishment, whatever you want to call it. It takes effort sometimes, but like it's worth it. Whereas, Damn. like, yeah, if it's work, you don't want to do. Wow, that is a that is a wisdom bomb, Addy. Well, let's end there. Wow, <laughs> thanks for that. Wait, so let me just sum that up. Yourself. Nourish yourself. Self nourishment. Self nourishment sounds like a spa that I'm going to mm. and just living in my whole <laughs> life. And I like that and a lot more than self care. Eating snacks. Yeah, I'm like I'm gonna be hydrated. I'm gonna feel good. I love that. Have a washed face. Oh, so guys, celebrate all your small wins today. Keep that positive energy going. Accept all your negative things that dance around. And um, if you want any more ADHD resources, check us out on ADHDers.com. <laughs> Lots of right. love, guys. See you Keep then. it real. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye.